Hello, Ariane. Nice to see you again. And thank you Hello, for spending everyone. some time with us. Yes, thank you very much. Um, so I know that you and the Edmond de Rothschild Foundation play a pivotal role in encouraging social empowerment. And I would like to have your views on the topic of inclusion and social empowerment and how you think the firms across the industry are addressing it. Yes, thank you very much. Um, yes, actually, over the past 15 years, uh, our foundations have been very active on these issues, uh, mainly in Europe, in Africa, and Israel, uh, through a wide range of programs that go from education, social entrepreneurship, or tailor-made uh, programs for leadership. Um, I would say social inclusion and empowerment are really key uh, to a resilient and sustainable uh, society and economy. Uh, we did a research uh, in-house over the last three years, uh, which highlights how vital human capital is for long-term growth for countries on one side and, and companies. Um, long-term growth and value creation not only depend on technological progress, but also on the accumulation of human capital. Uh, therefore, education and training increase productivity improve the capacity to innovate and to spread new technologies. So if you take investments in intangible assets, such as R&D or uh, softwares, um, they will increase your average productivity, but they are insufficient to guarantee a long-term performance if they're not supported by significant investments in human capital. Um, I think this pandemic will transform deeply uh, and accelerate companies' internal and external policies towards um, social responsibilities. The, I mean, this is great. So now if you shift a bit the topic um, and we talk about sustainable investing, mm -hmm. as there is an increased traction on that front from investors, what do you see as like some of the trends you're observing today in the industry? And how is Edmond de Rothschild supporting their clients and asks in that area? So I think we are, it's a really interesting times. Again, I was talking about this acceleration and you can really see today a conversion or alignment of interest between politics, economics and investors' appetite. Um, in the last years, there's been a significant surge in sustainability uh, disclosures, financial, non-financial. Um, uh, and there's a study that shows that companies that fail to meet investor expectations on ESG issues really risk losing their access to capital markets. Um, and I would say um, since his inauguration, President Biden uh, has taken significant steps uh, to move forward combating climate change and addressing social inequality. Uh, one of his key steps is the nomination of Gary Gensler um, as to lead the SEC. And I think we can expect uh, that he will push for more transparent and standardized ESG regulation. Uh, also, you can see that the gap for ESG metrics will close at a faster pace, at a faster pace than we expect, uh, because you're really moving from um, principle-based disclosure towards uh, rule-based, i.e. Uh, regulatory compliance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it will increase accountability, clean and uniform ESG reporting among all industries and obviously increase compliance sentiment. At our bank, we are 85% of our assets under management are already ESG. And we are just shifting to before year and will be fully ESG um, compliant. So, so if you think a bit about that acceleration in terms of basically demand around uh, reporting on ESG, on the other side, what kind of sustainable investment are the wealth management industry rolling out now to be able to address some of this demand in the market? So I think you're, you're seeing a... Um, an acceleration in the range of products from liquid to illiquid. So equity uh, on one side, which is really leading the development uh, of new products, of new funds. Credit that really represents 20% of new SG funds. 
credit products will be accelerated by the green um, and social sustainability bonds, uh, especially also um, carried forward by, by companies, central banks and, and development projects uh, coming out of the, the pandemic. Um, I think you also have ETF, a, a fantastic growth in ESG ETF assets um, that are really uh, of late growing at a very fast pace. Okay, so now we expect trillions to be invested, but how do you expect this to evolve over time? And, and how can wealth management firms cater to this shift? So I think we are, I'm expecting several shifts. I would say the first is moving towards a greater attention to compliance, to good governance. Uh, we've all been focusing a lot on the environment, now the social aspect of ESG, but we are personally giving a lot of attention to governance. The second is a shift towards uh, impact investing and really going beyond ESG. The third, I would expect uh, a development in thematic funds. Uh, why? Because you are going back to impact and being much more focused on one where you are investing. Um, the fourth trend, I would say, probably in some areas, is I would particularly um, private equity, some of the fees will be structured uh, differently with part of the fees related, correlated to impact measures. And I would say the fifth trend is really focusing on value chains. Uh, so investors integrate the full vertical value of ESG. Well, thank you very much, Ariane. Great to thank see you, you again. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much.